So we're in Barcelona, it's MWC 22. I'm here with Howard Watson, Group CTO at BT. Howard, great to see you again. Thanks very great much for joining us. Great to see you in us. person, Ray. Uh, absolutely, yes. I'm not just hologram. It's just a rumor. <laughs> yeah. um, so obviously we're at Mobile World Congress, so let's start with mobile networks. Um, where are we right now on the, the 5G roadmap? And there's a lot of talk here at the show about 5G standalone core platforms. Are these platforms going to give uh, telcos the toolboxes they need to make get the most out of 5G and make the most of the opportunities? No, great question. I mean, I mean, first of all, you know, we've already said we've now passed 40 percent population coverage. We're edging ever closer to getting half of the people in the UK um, with 5G available. Uh, so the rollout is important of the access network, clearly. But then, as you say, we are also in that transition shortly from the non-standalone we launched. Uh, where we've used a 4G core essentially to a full 5G core based standalone capability. So, so far, you know, with 5G you get enhanced mobile broadband. Um, what standalone enables is the other two apexes of the ITU triangle, which covers, you know, ultra reliability, low latency, and then also massive numbers of devices. And it's that capability that, um, you know, our 5G core uh, is now built tested and we're starting to migrate customers across. That will then enable that standalone capability. Okay, and what kind of opportunities or capabilities is that going to give to the, the rest of the, the BT empire as such? Because obviously you're the enabler, you know, the, the, the CTO and your teams are making this happen, but how much of a boost will this be for, say, for BT Enterprise, for example? BT Group rather than Empire, I right. think. Right? But, uh, <laughs> They're all empires. <laughs> but um, actually, I think Enterprise is the biggest beneficiary. Uh, and we're already, you know, we've got standalone in operation in private networks uh, for enterprise customers. But the ability to bring, bring the edge to life for mobile and push compute ever closer to businesses um, you know, that's, that's a great opportunity we'll see. I was talking yesterday uh, here at the conference about how, you know, only 20% of workloads are in the public cloud at the moment from enterprises. And I think network cloud and having that capability closer to customers, you know, will be the next, the next sort of injection into that capability. And, you know, we'll see that really blossoming with enterprise customers. Now, another of the big talking points here, uh, again, is uh, Open RAN. Um, it's, it's quite a disruptive conversation in the industry. Is this an exciting prospect or a bit of a distraction at this point? Because it's still very early days. It is early days, but it is, we're starting to see a bit more than PowerPoint now as you walk around the floor, uh, which is good to see. Um, you know, and open architectures are something that you know, we really support and we've been pushing that part of it for some time. Um, I, you know, we are, we're also looking at it for small cells, neutral hosts that are ORAN compliant, uh, and we see opportunities there. We started, we announced a couple of weeks ago, we're doing a pilot of the RIC capability of Open RAN in Hull. Um, as I've said before, though, deployment in our macro network is some years away. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. But uh, stepping stones, isn't it? You have to, to take your time to get there and find out what really works for everybody. Um, now, as a group CTO, what, what are the, the biggest pain points for you right now in what you do on a day-to-day on -day basis? And what's missing that you would like to get your hands on? As, as a group CTO, I cover uh, cybersecurity for the BT group. Um, I think that's pretty front of mind right now. Uh, so I'm spending a lot of time checking my phone um, and talking to the, my CISO, who's uh, obviously back in the UK, um, spending quite a bit of time in our security operations centre. So, you know, protecting ourselves from the ever-increasing cyber threat is important and critical. But back to the sort of technology side of things, um, the convergence of mobile and fixed. So as I'm rolling out 5G, as OpenReach are rolling out FTTP, how we really make that a seamless experience for customers is, is the great thing we'll start to get, I think, some big steps on this year. 
Right, okay. Well, that's great because, I mean, the word convergence has been used and bandied about, you know, for as far as I can remember, but now it, it, it'd be good to, to, to see it actually mean something for the industry and be put into practice. Um, another big, uh, well, a term that's really cropped up, I guess, in the last year in the context of the communications industry is the metaverse. What does that mean to, to you and what you're thinking and what BT might be thinking? I mean, I think, you know, and it's, it's actually, there's a lot of talk about the metaverse here this week. Um, and it's good to see, see some of it and get a feel of what, it, what capabilities it will bring. I mean, from my perspective, it's more bandwidth and lower latency. Um, and how do I monetize that? Are the sort of questions that are in my mind? Um, but actually, I think, and actually beyond consumers, you know, and having a presence in the metaverse, uh, or a twin in the metaverse, I think the enterprise use cases are quite interesting. Just thinking about how it changes the unified comms um, marketplace, I think is quite interesting. Yeah. yeah, no, I think, like you said, there's a, a lot going on the show floor here and lots of good ideas floating about. So, uh, And some, of course, in the industry have already picked up and started doing things. So, uh, yeah, good first early steps. Um, now, we've talked before about energy efficiency uh, in networks. I know this has been front of mind for you for, for quite a while. Have there been any sort of really important advances in improving energy efficiency in networks, say in the past year or year and a half? And are there any particular uh, tools, products or processes that are helping you right now at the moment to improve? So we, we're, we're trialling capabilities in the mobile network. So how do you switch off uh, carriers, if you haven't, if you don't need them all there for customers at the time, um, I've talked to some colleagues uh, over in the U.S. They switch off massive MIMO at 11 p.m. and then turn it back on again in the morning. Um, so I think there's probably 15% reduction we can get out of each cell site, um, you know, which will help. Uh, however, you know, if I look at the prices of energy last week uh, compared to what they were two years ago, it's four times. Um, so we've got significant things to do and it, it, it's, it's another one of those, I'm trying to get the whole organisation innovating around ways of, you know, we, we use two terawatt hours per year, so um, I'd love to get that down to half of that if I can. Right, wow, okay, that's a, that's a good goal to have, absolutely. Um, now we're in Barcelona, obviously people spend, you know, morning till night here in meetings, finding out what's going on in the industry, meeting new people finally at last. But at the end of the day, we all disperse. Many people go into Barcelona City. When you're back there and going out to dinner, what is your tapas go-to of choice? And, and what drink are you ordering Potato with Potato bravas it? would be my <laughs> tapas go. And it's great to be here with tapas on tap. That doesn't sound very good, does it? <laughs> and I'd like to say that I've sounds been, pretty good to I'd me. I'd like to say I've been <laughs> drinking jugs of sangria, but I think I've been lying if I said that. So um, Estrella's quite nice, though. I have heard this. I've heard that's pretty good. Well, I'm glad to see a vote for Patatas Bravas and yeah. that the Hamon isn't getting all the action here yeah. this week. So, Howard, great. Thanks very much for joining us and, uh, and good luck with the Bravas tonight. Thank you, Ray.